So here is a test in different music production software using the 16-inch M3 Max MacBook Pro. It's the 16-core variant using 12 performance core and 4 efficiency cores. If you have the time you should watch the entire video because I try to be transparent in showing how I am testing this and we are seeing some interesting and valuable results in the actual testing and comparing the results with the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2020 which has 4% performance cores and four efficiency cores. You will see the results in the end slides of each section. With that said, you have timestamps below this video, so you can, you can just jump to the section that interests you, but watching the entire video actually shows YouTube that people are interested in this video and will push it to more people. Link to the project files are under this video, and if you want to try it out on your own computer, you can do that. But you need Serum and Diva synthesizers to try my particular test at least. So the benchmark portion of this test starts off with Ableton Live 11. I have two software synthesizers. I'm using Serum and I'm using Diva. I think the latest version as of the recording of this video on both synthesizers and also the latest version of Ableton Live. So if you look at Serum here, it's just set up with some uh, basic patch enabled uh, both oscillators here and I have four units in here and two units in here. And on global it's set to X in quality and that's basically it. I will also save a patch for this uh, so you can download it in a project file so you can try it out yourself if you wish. If you don't have Serum, you can try to recreate this patch in, for example, Vital. That's a free plugin. The next synthesizer is Diva. It's also using the latest version and it's using the VST3 version. And it's the one that is uh, optimized for uh, ARM CPU. So it says ARM64 here. I have noticed in my testing that I need to leave multicore off in Diva to get the best possible performance actually. The quality here, the accuracy is set to great. And again, I will save a patch here for this uh, Diva setting so you can uh, try to recreate it here yourself in a project or you can just download the project file. I have a MIDI sequence here that is playing a uh, melody from one of my latest tracks here and it switches to another version of that melody in the uh, other MIDI clip here. So there are two different clips. The last clips are actually more demanding on the CPU. So we are doing two tests using 48 kilohertz in sample rate and in buffer size we are using 512 samples and then we are going to go to 32. So if we are trying 512 here you can take a look at the CPU cores here so the four on the top are the efficiency cores turn down the volume a little bit and the below here are the performance cores here so you can see the performance cores is getting used here now and you can see actually a little bit on the efficiency cores, but I'm not sure if the efficiency core series are used to process audio or if it's something else like the screen recording or something like that. So you can hear a little crackle here. When I disabled the screen recording, I didn't hear that crackle that much, maybe perhaps once every 30 seconds. So in this particular uh, setup, you can say that uh, the M3 Max is able to play around 143 tracks, I would say, 143, 142. Okay, so let's set the buffer size to 32 instead here. And actually, there is a uh, support document on Ableton's website that says that if you are running an ARM CPU, you should actually set the buffer size as low as possible. So if you see here on Ableton Live's so website, it says reducing the CPU load on Apple Silicon computers. So if you have the M1, M2, M3, I guess, they perform differently and buffer size and audio performance. So it says on Apple Silicon here, smaller buffer sizes may result in lower CPU usage and larger buffer sizes may result in higher CPU usage on Apple Silicon. So uh, the settings here are a little bit different. So optimizing live for Apple Silicon, you have to update all plugins, of course, make sure you have a native build. Recommend to set the buffer size to 128 or lower. In some cases with very CPU intensive processes, lowering the buffer size will not re reduce it. And in that case, you have to increase it. Now we have it on 32 in buffer size here. Let's just play it. Not going to work that well. So you can see it's uh, 
reaching the ceiling here, but not really the uh, ceiling of the actual CPU. But you can see that the efficiency cores here also, they are doing something. Actually. Okay. Let's reduce it to, let's say, uh, uh, 90 tracks. Okay, so this lighter part works fine, let's say here. Yeah, no crackle here, actually. As far as I can hear. When I make these videos, this might be a little bit boring to watch, but I, I want to kind of show you the process. You can kind of eventually recreate it yourself. So this is rather interesting because I have recorded the Bitwig uh, test as well and I thought Big Bitwig was performing better, but apparently it's not. Let's try 101 tracks. Okay, so here we have some crackle. So Ableton is actually able to perform around, let's say, 195 to 100 tracks here. No, I think I think we can say 90 tracks because we had a little crackle there. So 90 tracks in 32 buffer size. That's pretty good. Let's do another test. Try to max the CPU cores here and see what happens. In this project, I wanted to do the same test, but I wanted to use no third party plugins. I wanted to use the stock plugins that is included in Ableton Live to see if we have any difference in performance. And as you can see here now, I have loaded up the project and the CPUs start going right away here, but I don't play anything. So that's pretty interesting. So you have the CPU load already, so it's probably some, I don't know what's happening here, if it's some LFO going or some oscillators that are playing. But as you can see here, it's uh, just starts loading the CPU. And if we take a look at the activity monitor, we can see here that uh, Ableton Live have a pretty high CPU load now, even when we are not playing anything. So I guess there is... I don't know how that happens, but uh, someone might be able to explain it. So we are testing it now in, uh, let's set it to 512 sample rate. And when I set it to 512 in sample rate, you can actually see here that the CPU load went way down, but I'm not playing anything. So I think this behavior is pretty interesting and uh, I don't really know what's happening here, but uh, I'm at least showing it to you. So if I play it here now, Okay, so we have 724 tracks. So I'm using Drift on both here, okay. So what I want to do here now is just to see if it will tax the CPU to the max. So if you see here now, the efficiency cores are somewhat affected by this, but I'm not sure if it's just some processing sound or if it's just handling some other stuff. It's not for me to say, but you can see here the performance cores are getting quite high here. So it's able to utilize the performance cores but it's not pushing the efficiency cores. But the total system load for the system is between 50 and 60%, and I don't hear any fans or anything. 
but I mean 724 tracks. Let's say if we go to 500 tracks, what happens then? Can hear some little crackle here in 500 tracks actually. So let's try tr 370 tracks instead, see if we can get get it working with the Ableton stock uh, plugins. Seems like that is the limit here without crackling that much. So Ableton Live was able to handle around 140, 144 tracks in this setup using 512 in buffer size. And actually in uh, 32 buffer size is it was able to handle around uh, around 90 tracks actually and that's pretty good and as they say on Ableton's website if you have Apple Silicon Max and you produce on Ableton Live you should actually try to set the sample size as low as possible when you're starting out and if you are getting uh, performance issues then first you can uh, raise it to let's say uh, 64 or 128 or a higher sample size so this is a uh, change actually from uh, let's say Intel to Apple Silicon here we have Logic Pro 10.8 running two software synthesizers. It's Diva and Serum running the audio unit version. If you just want to see some uh, how the synthesizer looks, uh, check the start of the Ableton Live project where I lay that out. We are starting with uh, 512 in buffer size and then I have manually set processing threads to 16 so we have 12 high performance scores here and 4 efficiency cores on the uh, maxed out M3 Max. Buffer range I set to medium here, multi uh, threading is at default and summing is at 64 bits. So when we are playing this now we have 150 tracks, uh, nothing else going on here, just the synthesizers, no plugins like compressors and EQ and everything. And if I play 150 tracks here, it looks like this. It goes for a while and you get a system overload. Okay, so remember the number 150. So if I reduce this to let's say 143, let's just delete those tracks see how that happen how that works seems like it's working better but in logic you have to run things for a while to see if it kind of equalizes out So I think we are right on point here. I was able to get around 145 tracks uh, without screen recording at the same time. And we are running 512 buffer. And uh, it seems like that is working. As you can see on the CPU chart here, you see that the performance cores are getting taxed. They are not taxed to 100%. And as we can see here, the efficiency cores are... They are doing something here, but uh, I'm not sure if it's regarding sound or if it's just handling some other things. But you can clearly see that the performance cores here are pushed harder than the efficiency cores. So now I have changed the buffer size to 32, still having the same processing threads manually set to 16 here. And then I changed the process buffer range from medium to small instead. And when I play this back now, let's take a look. Let's go to the more demanding part of this melody where there are some f more notes playing.
As you can see here, we still are not getting a uh, buffer uh, overload while well, we are having the same amount of tracks as we had earlier. So let's try increasing it to 156. Okay, you see you get a system overload there with 32 in buffer size. So actually it was able to play more tracks in a lower buffer size compared to a higher buffer size. Okay, we get a system overload there as well. Just uh, delete two tracks more. And you can say that my screen recording is taking up, a, I don't know, four tracks or something. Or three, two, three tracks. So this is pretty interesting because uh, on 512 buffer size I was able to run around 144 tracks on InLogic Pro and in 32 buffer size I was able to run 152 tracks. If we go into settings in Logic here we see that the round trip 3.2 milliseconds 1.5 milliseconds output. If you haven't seen the Ableton Live part of the test yet, we saw on Ableton Live's website they were saying that you should actually set the buffer size lower on Apple Silicon CPUs because you get better performance there and the only time you increase the buffer size is actually if you uh, hear a crackle or it's not able to play. So when you start out a new project on Apple Silicon, you should actually aim for a, a lower buffer size, like let's say below 128. So again, it seems like in uh, my testing I have done before that Logic Pro is able to utilize the performance a little bit better. It's utilizing all of the performance cores, but still it's not using the efficiency cores here. And I think the red part on the chart here says that it's reserved for the system. I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct there, so you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but it says her system, it's on red here. So I think that is the case. But yeah, Logic Pro working uh, pretty good. So here I have the same project in uh, Bitwig, the latest version. I'm just using the demo version. Diva here is a special version though. It's using the uh, clap version of the plugin. So this is a standard that uh, I think Yuhi and the Bitwig developers have done. If you see here, it says revision 15.105 ARM64. But when I play this, I can see that I get about 144 tracks uh, with the same type of project. So if we see here, and we look at the CPU meter, it's barely able to play it. You can hear a little crackle here now. When I was not screen recording, I heard maybe one crackle a minute or something. So I guess the screen recording is taking up some of the CPU cycles here. And the CPU, you see the four cores on the top here are the efficiency cores and the course below here is uh, the uh, performance course. So it seems like it's uh, able to utilize the performance course uh, only, not the efficiency core really. I think it's uh, OBS that is using the uh, efficiency course here. Bitwig is able to play around 144 tracks, about the same as Ableton Live in 512 uh, buffer size. So now we have the uh, sample buffer rate to 32 samples and it's uh, not going I'll be able to play 144 tracks. So let's see how many tracks it's able to play with uh, 32. So this is 100 tracks. So 80 tracks with uh, 32. Seems like it's working in the first part of the melody thing here. But when we get some a few more notes here. 
you hear a little crackle there. So, but barely able to play 80 tracks in 32 buffer size. It's pretty good. Let's uh, reduce it to uh, 70. So 70 tracks in 32 buffer size, around 144 tracks in 512 buffer size in Bitwig using the clap version of Diva and using uh, Serum. Seems like it's not that much difference between uh, Ableton Live and really not really that much difference using VST versus uh, clap. Okay, so Reaper is a little interesting. I'm running Reaper 7.03 here. And if we take a look, a quick look at the settings I'm using, uh, you can just go through here and pause the video if you want. And just go through these. Yeah. And uh, on the device here, I'm using 48 kilohertz and then 512 in buffer size to start off with. And But if we go to buffering, it's on auto here now, thread priority highest and behavior is here set to automatic. If you have seen my previous tests, you see that uh, the uh, M3 Max is able to handle around 144 tracks in the setup I have here now. And if you want to see how the setup is done, you have to see the Ableton Live uh, start uh, of the test. But basically it's uh, the Serum synthesizer and Diva synthesizer just playing some kind of notes here in just a basic patch without anything else as effects, no compressors, no EQ, no nothing. So here I have 190 tracks of this setup and uh, with 512 buffer size and let's just play. Just lowering the volume here so you can see that uh, the CPU here is going up CPU usage and you can hear some crackle but I have 190 tracks and these are almost 50 tracks more than uh, I used in the previous DOS but if we go into the settings here now and under audio here and on buffering so I will keep the thread priority on highest and then on behavior here I will set that to, uh, instead of having it on automatic here, I will set it to, let's say 12. Let's see now how, what's going to happen. Okay, so a little crackle there. We're just on the edge, but that's because I'm screen recording. If I wouldn't screen recording, it would work fine. Okay, so we get to the part in the track, which is I'm playing some more notes and a little more demanding. But you get the point here. It's using the efficiency course actually, but you have to go into the settings here and actually set this behavior from automatic to something else. So let's try eight on aggressive here and let's just reduce it to something else. So it seems like it's uh, when it hits some more notes, it's obviously going to have to process more and it kind of crackles there, even with 170 tracks. But you see, you see that it utilizes the efficiency course. Let's reduce it to 155. Still crackling at 155. Let's reduce it to 150. So I've reduced the track count to 145. And I still have the process, I set the behavior now to automatic. And this part works just fine. But if I play the part here where I have more notes, it's having problems, it starts crackling. So even with the same amount of tracks I used in the previous tests, so 
And if I set this to, let's say, um, 12 here on behavior, let's see here. So, I mean, the audio is still crackling, but it's using the efficiency course. But it's still not, I mean, good enough because uh, obviously you don't want things to crackle when you're trying this. I don't really know how to interpret this, so let's try and see what happens if we set the buffer to 32 instead. Okay, let's try. So 32 did not work that well. Let's reduce the track count to, let's say, 100. Still crackling at 100 tracks. Let's reduce it to 90. So still crackling at 90 tracks. Let's see if we can uh, change the buffering here and see if we get some other behavior. Yeah, but maybe it looks like that is actually working. had some crackle there you may might have heard that even though it's able to utilize the efficiency course here it seems like it's in the ballpark performing the same as the other DOS. So some kind of conclusion looking at the performance between the DOS using 512 in buffer size we can see that the performance is more or less the same in this particular project at least. Logic Pro is the winner here with 145 tracks while Ableton, Bitwig and Reaper are not really that far behind with uh, they was able to handle around 142 to 144 tracks. A bigger difference can be seen when we go for 32 in buffer size and the winner here is actually Logic with a whopping 152 tracks. But I have to leave a little disclaimer here because Logic may do some kind of Apple magic in the background that we don't know about. So I would take the Logic result with a little grain of salt because Apple is known to, I mean, adjust on things in software or in the background that we don't know about. And I think that 152 tracks in 32 buffer size was a huge difference compared to the other DAWs. But um, anyway, it's pretty impressive if, if it is true. Ableton Live and Reaper was able to run about 90 tracks in 32 buffer size while Bitwig was able to manage around 70 tracks in 32 buffer size. Going for Logic or Ableton Live as your main music production DAW should be a solid choice on these Apple Silicon computers. Bitwig and Reaper are also solid choices and in Reaper for example you have more control over your cores and performance and I was actually able as you perhaps can see in the video to make Reaper use the efficiency cores but it still produced crackle in the audio if I increased the track amount so it didn't really improve anything as far as I can tell. It just used the course but it didn't seem like the efficiency course in Reaper actually produced audible better results and I have to just leave a disclaimer if I did the testing wrong or something. I am uh, you can tell me that but it looked like it didn't make that huge difference. And this is just one specific test and you can download the project files below if you want to try it out yourself. And it would be really cool if you could perhaps test it on your Mac, post the specs of your Mac below and the results in the comments below. Make sure to watch the next video that YouTube suggests for you here. It might be more content related to testing in music production or something else. And if you want me to do other tests, share your thoughts in the comments below and I might get to it at some point. Thank you for watching.